cellular jail, the most defining landmark of Port Blair, the Andaman Islands. This heritage monument is a symbol of suffering and forbearing struggle for Indian independence from British rule. The cellular jail is truly the heart and soul of not only Port Blair, but of the entire Andamans. This amazing edifice stands as a silent tribute to the human spirit's eternal quest for equality and freedom. This mammoth piece of architecture stands silent testimony to the fervor of nationalism. Enter its premises, and you were sucked into a time zone when history was being made. Men who were struggling for India's equality, India's freedom. Men deemed dangerous by the British were kept in this cellular jail, a thousand miles away from the mainland of India in what became known as Kala Pani, the black waters. And the saying was that if you came once to Kala Pani, you never returned. Cut off from the mainland by seas all around, these virgin islands were an inescapable natural prison. The first jail and a gallows came up at Viper Island. But one event changed everything. The Indian Sepoy Mutiny of 1857. After this first war of independence, jails on the mainland were brimming with prisoners. So, a much larger jail was required to impart solitary confinement to the most dangerous Indian nationals. In 1893, the construction of this cellular jail was started by convicts or freedom fighters themselves. And then over the course of the next 10 to 12 years, this entire jail was constructed so that finally there were 693 cells right here in the cellular jail so that more than 700 of these dangerous criminals or freedom fighters could be kept under British control. It was here that many a firebrand revolutionary sacrificed his life with an old people tree as a mute witness. If it could speak, what stories would it tell? It was here that some of the strongest voices of freedom were incarcerated by the British. Perhaps it was because of the strict punishment and hostile environment across the mysterious waters that exile in the Andamans was called Sazai Kalapani, punishment to the black waters. Let's ask Dr. Rashid Iqbal, the curator of the cellular jail and museum, the perfect guide to take me around. The basic idea be behind the construction of the cellular jail was to uh, make the penal uh, character uh, in the initial confinement right. more penal in nature. More, more difficult. More difficult, more, uh, more, more vigilant and strict discipline. When it was built, it had seven uh, wings, blocks, and uh, it was like a spokes of a bicycle. Exactly. And exactly. here you can, also you can see each uh, wing, each block faced the back wall of the other wing. One uh, prisoner's lodge in this particular wing, right. they should not communicate with the other uh, prisoners of that wing. So made, they made it like that. And uh, the whole construction was in such a way that all entry and exit points to the cellular jail were from was, that point. From that point. Thankfully, their sacrifices did not go in vain, for the Andaman Islands acted as a precursor to India's independence, years before she actually earned it. It was here that Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, the head of the provisional government of Azad Hind, hoisted the Indian tricolor for the first time on 30th December 1943 
on British free Indian territory. Today, the cellular jail is a shadow of its former self. Only three wings have survived calamity and war. A pillar of honor has been erected, and an eternal flame burns continuously in one corner. This is the story of this amazing place, beginning in 1857 and finally ending in its own way in 1947, when India, because of the sacrifices of so many people right here, finally won freedom.